there are some matches that stick in your memory for life. You want to rewatch them and show them to your friends. For some, it's a fight they saw in their childhood. Someone became an accidental spectator of the legendary meat grinder and therefore could not forget these impressions. And someone actively follows the sport and knows much more about each fighter and the price of defeat. The fight between Don Fry and Yoshihiro Takayama will forever be etched in the history of both the Pride promotion and the entire MMA. Sit down as comfortably as possible. The journey will be short, but spectacular and brutal. You are about to watch a real Mexican shootout, but according to MMA rules, let's find out if this fight has passed the test of time. You are on Sport Legends channel, and we are about to start. Don Fry, at the time of his first Pride appearances, already had the status of a living legend in the UFC, as well as a successful career as a very charismatic foreign wrestler in the Japanese promotion New Japan Pro Wrestling. A true star from head to toe and a much needed symbol for America after the events of September 11, 2001. Somewhere around the turn of 2001 and 2002, patriotic shorts became an important attribute of this fighter, in addition to his mustache. The American was preparing for a fight against Mark Coleman, who he had already met in the 90s and lost to in a competitive match. The thirst for revenge is very motivating, but Mark was forced to withdraw from the fight due to a neck injury just a couple of weeks before the Pride 21 tournament. A replacement fighter was chosen, and it was the Japanese Yoshihiro Takayama. Frankly speaking, he didn't look like a very interesting athlete to impose his game on the experienced Don Fry. At that time, the Japanese had only three fights under MMA rules, and he lost all three. In his defense, his opponents were not weak. But Yoshihiro was a real wrestling star in his home country and stood out for his intimidating size. He was able to prove in previous fights that his head was ready to take a lot of blows. And when you go up against the Predator, you have to be ready to miss a lot. But were we ready for what awaited us right from the start? It all started even earlier, before the gong. Appreciate this face-to-face -face meeting. All attention is focused on the center of the ring, where two supersized men are planning to beat the shit out of each other. Do you think we're being a little hyperbolic? Well, remember the way they look at each other, and your skepticism about the brutality of their fight. The word chopping block perfectly describes what the first 30 seconds of this fight were like. The first five seconds and a few accurate punches from Don Fry. First a jab and then a couple of crosses. Then an active clinch with uppercuts and hooks. Yoshihiro Takayama, because of such a lively start, is forced to first miss, then recover, and then release a couple of knees to the body. And then there's a good example of what a hockey clinch is. You hold the opponent's head with one hand, swing and hit with the other. It's as simple as that. It doesn't matter if it's an uppercut or a hook. Both fighters have enough power, so the only question is who will fall first. But they survived those 30 seconds. More than 90 punches for two. It's not the fury and brutality with which they strike that is fascinating. Both on their feet, they are catching their breath in the clinch. Yoshihiro's face is a complete bruise. The Japanese's trump card in defense is his knees. These blows are very, very strong and the American literally dies of pain. To calm himself down, the Japanese pulls two bodies to the ground with a great takedown, and then he knees him in the head. It looks impressive, but it doesn't have the desired effect. So Don Fry immediately got to his feet. They again took up what they were doing perfectly well entertaining the audience with this shootout between two heavyweights. The Predator is more accurate. He successfully hits his opponent's head, investing in every punch. But there is still no knockout. At the same time, the Japanese does not deviate from the tactics of defeating with the use of knees. The Japanese in the audience are smiling, obviously happy with the show they are getting. I can literally see someone in the audience smiling, looking into the face of his countryman, Yoshihiro, but you won't find a single muscle on his face to show his joy. After four grueling minutes, the referee stopped the fight so that doctors could check the Japanese man's condition and provide him with the necessary assistance. The fight went on in defiance of common sense. It continued thanks to Yoshihiro, who refused to give up. The two meet again in the center, reminding the inattentive public who suddenly missed the beginning of the fight how it was. Don Fry, like the entire fight, is more precise and varied. He pours it on, not scoring with punches to the head and body. Both just punch and hope to be more powerful than their opponent. This is only possible in the days of old-school MMA. 
Takayama makes the main mistake, just like a few minutes before, he decides to take the American to the ground. But he didn't take into account several factors, so the Predator was right on top. He could only finish off his opponent, who was so conveniently on the ground, no longer able to defend himself. The result was a technical knockout. 134 significant strikes in the entire fight. This is the third highest number in the history of the Pride promotion. There's a whole story behind the scenes. All that followed in Don Fry's career after this fight was defeat after defeat. He acted in movies and quite successfully, but as an athlete, he only lost. He was beaten by everyone who wanted to. Even a rematch with Mark Coleman was organized, but the result did not change Coleman won. Fry saw not only the end of Pride, but also the end of his career. A career that should have ended, perhaps, immediately after the fight against Yoshihiro Takayama. It would have been better for his health. As it is, I had constant back pain and even a coma lasting two months. This is the kind of fees that fighters in such a contact sport receive. As for the Japanese man, his MMA career is painted only with the color of defeat. After the fight with the Predator, he appeared in the sport just once more and lost again. The conclusion was simple, he had to return to wrestling. And he did, and for good reason. He became desirable and interesting again, and even more so than before he left for the world of MMA. After the fight in 2002, they met face to face only twice. Once, on the set of a movie, where they had the honor of reenacting their fight again, in front of a different caliber of audience. And the second time was in 2019. The Japanese wrestler's career was very bright, but no one is 100% safe from danger. In one of his performances, the Japanese wrestler landed on his head, which left him disabled. He is almost completely paralyzed. It was a real tragedy, but Yoshihiro himself is still positive. In those interviews and on those shows where we were able to see him, he is often smiling and does not ask for excessive mourning. In 2019, they met again. Don Fry visited his former rival to show his great respect and gratitude that together they made one of the best fights in the history of sports ever. For them, the sport is in the past, as are their glorious careers. But for us, that match is a reminder that they were and remain legends. Maybe it's worth it for such fights to happen, and we will leave these two gladiators alone. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the experience and are ready to reward us with a like and a subscription if you haven't done so yet. We also love to hear your comments and suggestions on which fight we should analyze. Stay healthy.